All right, so we're on 3.2 polynomial functions and their graphs. And so 3.1, those were polynomial functions also. Those were specifically quadratic functions. And so really we're going to kind of look at the higher ordered polynomials, so the ones with higher powers, so higher than 2. And so here are just some examples of what we're going to see right here. So we're going to see these nice smooth curves. Okay, so we see that. Those are examples of what we're going to be doing. These are these are not polynomial functions because right here there's a disconnect or they have sharp turns. So what we're going to deal with, like I said, is going to kind of look more like this. And so what we're going to do here is this, this is kind of like a puzzle. We're going to kind of look at little pieces of this and then we're going to eventually put all the pieces together and graph these. So the first thing we're going to talk about is this thing called the in behavior of a polynomial function is the behavior of f of x, we're talking about the y value basically, what's the behavior of y as x approaches positive or negative infinity? This behavior can be determined by the term with the largest exponent. So what we're talking about, let's talk about this behavior that I'm referring to. So if you look at these examples right here, what we're looking at is there's some ups and downs, you know, we go down, up, and then back down, and then eventually we just end up going up. And so see, as X is going towards positive infinity, what's happening, what's the behavior of Y? Well, Y is actually going towards positive infinity also. You'll also see a lot of times the terminology will say that it rises or it falls. And so as X goes towards the positive infinity just increases indefinitely, y is going to increase also. And so it's rising. And then on the other hand, if you look over here, as x goes towards negative infinity, as you plug in negative x values, what's going to happen is it's also going to rise. So the y values are also increasing indefinitely. Now, if you look at the difference on the first graph here, it's the same behavior to the right. So basically as x goes towards infinity, positive infinity. Sometimes we use this notation here with an arrow, which just basically indicates as x approaches infinity, which really infinity is not a number, it's more of a concept. So as x increases indefinitely positively, what's going to happen to the y value? It increases also, or it rises. If you're talking about the graph, how it looks, it goes up, right? Now if you look over here, as x goes towards negative infinity, which basically x goes towards these negative numbers like negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, and so on, what's happening? Well, it's dropping, it's falling, the graph is falling, and so technically what's happening is y is going towards negative infinity over here. And so that's basically what we're going to look at, but we're going we're gonna to try to figure out how to get that information by looking at the equation. And so that's what this is talking about right here. So what you have to do in order to figure out this end behavior to the end to the right, the end to the left, to figure out if it's going up or down, uh, you have to find the term with the largest exponent. And so I have that bolded right here. So it's the term with the highest power. These other terms, they're important. They play a role. But this first term is always going to end up being your largest term as you plug in large positive or negative x values. And so that's why we focus on this to determine the end behavior. Okay, so note, a coefficient is the value in front of the variable. So the coefficient in this example would be 3. The coefficient of the term with the largest exponent, the coefficient would be 3. The leading coefficient is the value in front of the variable with the largest exponent. So that's what I just said. The degree of the polynomial refers to the largest exponent of the polynomial. So the degree of this example would be a 5 right there, would be 5. So the coefficient, the leading, the leading coefficient in my example would be a 3, and the degree of the polynomial would be a 5. Now those two pieces of information are going to tell you the end behavior. So there's this thing that we use called the leading coefficient test. So if the leading coefficient is positive, so if that number is positive in front of the variable with the highest power, if it's positive, then as x goes to infinity, basically as you go to the right on the graph, then y will go up or rise. So y is going to go up towards infinity. So we saw that example on both of these. 
right here. So as I went to the right, it went up. As I went to the right, it went up. Now, if that leading coefficient is negative instead, so instead if it was a, like a negative 3 out in front, then that would cause it to have the opposite behavior. As x goes to the right, then y would actually go towards negative infinity, or it would go down or falls. Okay, and so you, you could, you'll see either one of these terminologies going up, down, rises, falls. So just kind of be aware of that when you're doing your homework. And either one's fine. Okay, so that determines the the right end behavior. So this focuses on the right end behavior. It's all dependent upon is this positive or negative that that's basically it is the leading coefficient positive or negative if it's positive it's going to go up to the right if it's negative it's going to go down to the right now what determines the left in behavior well that's going to be based on the the degree of the polynomial if the degree of the polynomial is even then the left in behavior will have the same behavior as the right. So if the left end be so if I'm dealing with an even exponent, what's going to happen is the left end behavior will be the same. So as I plug in negative x values, it's also going to rise or fall depending on whatever I was doing on the right end behavior. Now why is that? Well, because for example, um, let me come up with one with an even power. So if you if you have x to the power of four, right? Let's say that's the leading coefficient. Well, whether I plug in, you know, a positive number like let's just say 10, 10 to the power of 4, or if I plug in ne uh, negative 10 to the power of 4, that's still going to give me the same result. So even powers always result in a positive result right there. And so whether I plug in positive 10 or negative 10, if I raise it to an even power, I get the same result. So even power it's going to be the same result. So even results, that might be a way to kind of help you remember. So even power, then you're going to have the same behavior left and right. So you see how this both went up? It went up on the right and it went up on the left. That must mean that the equation for this, the leading coefficient has an even power. It would have an even power, the leading coefficient. Now, what if it's odd? Well, if the degree of the polynomial is odd, odd, then the left end behavior will have the opposite, the opposite behavior of the right end behavior. So just remember odd and opposite, they both have the O's right there that might help you. So if you have an odd exponent, it's going to be the opposite behavior to the left of whatever the right was doing. Even same, even same. Okay, so for example, once again, let's do, so if you had something like x to the power of 3 is the leading coefficient. Well, if you take 10 and raise it to the power of 3, that is not going to be the same if you take negative 10 and raise it to the power of 3. This one will give me a positive 1,000. This one will give me negative 1,000. So I'm getting opposite results. So I'm having opposite behaviors. And so if you look at my first example, this one must have had an odd leading coefficient because one end behavior is going up. The other in behavior is going down. So the leading coefficient, which is the term with the highest power, must have been odd for this example right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and try a couple of these. Okay, and also if you just kind of take a moment and just kind of think about what happens here. Um, this is my leading coefficient right here. Just think about it. What if I plug in a positive number for x? Do I get a positive result? Yes, I do. So see, it rises to the right because if I plug in positive numbers for x, I'm going to get, oops, let me change that to a y. I'm going to get positive results for y. So as I plug in positive numbers for x, I get positive results for this value right there. Now, if you're doing the leading coefficient test, it's just simple as that it's positive. If it's positive, then to the right, it's going to rise. It's going to go up, okay? And then since it's an odd power, that means that I'm going to have the opposite effect when I look at the left end behavior. So over here on the left end, it falls. And it's because as I plug in negative x values like negative 5 or whatever, as I plug in negative x values, 
what's going to happen is I'm going to get negative y values in return because a negative raised to a power of 3 is going to result in a negative, right? So if I take a negative number and raise it to a power of 3, it's going to come back as another, like a larger negative number, right? A negative times a negative times a negative will result in that negative right there. So there's kind of two ways you can think about this. You can just kind of think about what if I plug in 5 and negative 5? What, what would my result be positive or negative? And that can determine does it rise or does it fall? Um, or you can just follow these rules right here. And the rules are not super difficult, but it might be worth just taking a moment just to kind of think about this for a second. So, for example, if I plug in 5 for this right here, I'd have negative 5 to the power of 4. Well, 5 to the power of 4, let's see, I believe that's 625, but you're going to have a negative that, that's coming along with it, right? So you're going to get negative 625, and so you can see that it's going to fall to the right, right? So it's going to fall to the right. Then if you're going to follow these rules up here, if it's negative, automatically you know it's going to fall to the right. Then... As far as the left-end behavior, that's based upon the power. It's based upon the exponent. It's an even, even exponent, same results. So you can see over here, it's also going to fall on the graph on the left side. And once again, if you want to plug in a negative number, that's fine. So you would have negative, negative 5 to the power of 4. Now, like I said, for a moment, I'm just kind of disregarding the other stuff. It's important. That causes kind of the roller coaster ride in the middle, the ups and downs. But this leading coefficient is going to be in control of that in behavior, the extreme behavior on the right and the left. And so what happens here is negative 5 to an even power actually does come back as positive 625, but then you have that negative that was on the outside waiting. And so you can see you're getting negative results also. So your y value is coming back as being negative to the left and to the right. So the good news is you'll get plenty of practice with this. Like I said, we're looking at all the pieces of the puzzle. So this is just one piece of the puzzle. So the first piece is just looking at how do I figure out my extreme behavior on the right and the left? Because what happens is, like I said, you're going to have some ups and downs. But as I go out to the right, I'm eventually either going to go up or go down. Same thing to the left. I'm eventually just going to continue to rise or continue to fall. So I have a couple more examples of this. And then we'll look at another piece of the puzzle. So I would take a moment, just pause this, and see if you can answer this. Okay, so looking at this, uh, this is how it's going to look on your homework. They're going to ask you what's the degree of the, so right here it says use the degree and the leading coefficient to determine the end behavior of the graph of the polynomial function. So this is the leading coefficient right here. What's the degree? The degree is a 3. That's the power. What's the leading coefficient? It's a negative 1. It's an understood negative 1 in front. So if you remember, the leading coefficient determines the right end behavior. So the leading, the right there, since it's negative, I know what's going to happen is you're going to have some ups and downs, but as I go to the right, it's going to go down because of the negative. Then because I have an odd degree, the left end behavior is going to have the opposite behavior. So that's going to go up to the left. And so let's see. It looks like that would match this first one right here. So you can see the arrows pointing up to the left and down to the right. So those are my end behavior for this first one. Okay, on the next one right here, this is the leading coefficient. So the degree is going to be 4. And the leading coefficient is 5. Okay, so I'm dealing with uh, an even power and I'm dealing with a positive value to start with right here. So once again, we're going to have a little bit of a roller coaster ride, but since it's positive, this determines the right in behavior. That means I'm going to go up to the right. And then since it's even, I'm going to have the same results as I go to the left. So it's going to look like that. And so it looks like that would match up with this one right here. So the lean coefficient test, it's a great way to do it. But also, like I said, if you just kind of take a moment to kind of think about it, if I plug in a positive number, I'm going to get a positive result, which means my y values are positive. I'm going to go up. 
And if I plug in a negative number, I'm still going to get a positive result because of the even power. Negative number raised to an even power is going to give me a positive. And so that goes up also. Over here, on example A, if I plug in a positive number, I get a positive result. But then I have that negative out in front that's going to cause my results to become negative. Then if I plug in a negative number to an odd power, I get a negative result. But then I have a negative times a negative, which causes it to swing up instead to the left. All right, so that's the first piece of the puzzle. The next thing we're going to look at now is this thing called the multiplicity of x-intercepts for a polynomial function. And so we should be pretty good about finding x-intercepts, but now we're going to talk about this thing called multiplicity, where maybe sometimes an x-intercept um, will actually appear more than once. And so that will affect the behavior of how it looks on the graph. So if you have a factor x minus a raised to some power k, where k is going to be some integer uh, one or larger, it's going to yield repeated zeros at x equals a and have a multiplicity of k. So we typically use k to represent our multiplicity. So if that power k right there is odd, what's going to happen is the graph will just go ahead and cross the x-axis at that point. So if you have a power of 1, 3, 5, and so on, if it's an odd power. If it's even, if the exponent is actually even up here, then the graph touches the x-axis at that value and turns around. A lot of times, sometimes we'll say that it bounces off the x-axis. And so I have an example of each one of these in this graph down below. So right here, you have your equation, and I'm focused on these factors right here. And so this first factor has an understood power of 1. So that means the multiplicity of this x-intercept is 1. And so the solution to this is at x equals negative 1. So at x equals negative 1, that's one of the values that will cause this expression to equal 0. And so that's going to be right here. And so you can see that it crosses because we have an odd, we have an odd multiplicity. Now, if you look at this other one right here, you have 2x minus 3 raised to the power of 2. And so, you know, that, that basically, that's the same thing as having 2x minus 3 and 2x minus 3, right? Because power of 2 would be like, you have that factor written twice there. Now, we're going to keep it in this, we want to write it with the power of 2, though, but I just want to show you that this is what this represents right here. Okay, so what you'll notice is we have even multiplicity now, right? And so the solution to this, if you were to take 2x minus 3 and set that equal to 0 and solve, you end up getting x equals 3 over 2, or basically 1.5, right? 1.5, which is right here. And so what happens is, see, it bounces off the x-axis. We don't actually uh, cross it. We just kind of bounce off it. So I kind of want to go into a little bit more in, uh, depth on this. We're not going to get too crazy with our multiplicity. Most of them will be 1, 2. We will probably see 3 also. Um, probably won't run into 4. But even multiplicity typically kind of looks the same. It kind of has that almost parabola shape to it. And um, as the power gets higher, it kind of gets a little bit flatter where it hits the x-axis, but I don't think we're going to go much uh, beyond multiplicity of 3. But so, for example, if you had something like x, you know, whatever, I'm just going to make up these numbers are kind of arbitrary, x plus 2 to a power of 1, it's almost going to kind of be like a line kind of crossing the x-axis. And so you can kind of see this. It's not completely a straight line, but it kind of cuts kind of just straight through it, right? Um, and then if you had something like, and I'll just stick with x plus 2, it doesn't matter, squared, what happens is when you hit the x-axis, you're going to have kind of, and it's just going to kind of bump off of it like that, and it kind of has that parabola shape to it, and it could come from the underside also, where it could come up and peak and then come back down, something like that. But it basically kind of has that parabola shape where it hits the x-axis. So if you get let's say x plus 2 raised to the power of 3, 
What's going to happen with that is the x-intercepts at negative 2, so we'll just put that right here. And the shape it's going to take on is the cubic function shape, the cubic function shape. And so the way that looks, because it's odd, it's going to cross, but it's not going to look like this first one. It's actually going to kind of curve into it and curve out of it, kind of like a cubic function from unit 2. So remember when we were doing transformations of functions? So it's going to kind of have that shape to it. Now, it might come back up and then go back down or something like that. It might, you know, but around that area where it hits the x-intercept, it's going to have that shape. It's going to curve in and kind of out of it right there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this part one here. And so in part two, we're going to pick up on this multiplicity and look at some graphs and trying to determine what the multiplicity is.